So up to this point, we already cover. Um, up to this point, we already cover what we should know about simple regression. Okay, simple regression is very simple. It's just like like. Uh, in its model formula, it's just there's only one x, right? So you you you, you use this single x to predict y. So inside the model, there are two things that need to be determined, which is the coefficient, b0 and b1, right? Okay. So how how is this b0 and b1 come from? Because we are fitting the data into a method, right? We give this method the data. We told him that we want to predict milk by grocery, right? And that then then the the the, the method will do the there 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 is there are some internal uh, algorithm, and it would it will try to uh, uh, calculate a set of coefficient, right? In this case, b zero and b one, that minimize the residual, which is the difference between estimation and the the actual data. Okay. So, any question about simple linear regression up to this point? Okay. okay. So uh, we can move on, right? We can move on. There are some extra complexity uh, within the summary, as I explained to you, uh, and and that complexity actually come with the fact that um, all of this inferential statistics, uh, the estimation that we are met, that we met, always come with uncertainty, right? Okay, so we estimate uh, our target, but we know that the estimation would have some error, right? Okay, we estimate the coefficient but we know that the coefficient is not precisely sit in its point estimation, right? It comes with the standard arrow, isn't it, right? So, uh, uh, in addition to know the, the, when we do the prediction, in addition to know the, 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 the point estimation of the predicted value, we also want to know the average error, the average random error that come with the estimation, right? And so this is this is the third important uh, variable that we want to know, okay? Right? Okay. Let, let me say it again because it's so 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 important, right? We, we are using this inferential statistic to do prediction, okay? that prediction always comes with uncertainty, okay? So, uh, so when we do the estimation of our target variable, there is a y hat, and we know that that y hat come with, a, come with some error, okay? And so the model summary will tell us the distribution of the error and also the expect, expected value of the arrow, okay? So you should bear it in mind, okay? Uh, we also cover some of like 95% like interval estimation, but that is just for completeness, okay? For the rest of our course, we, were, we will not use it, okay? We will not use it. Actually, only the finance people, managerial finance people will use that, okay? For the rest of the discipline, uh, very seldom we will use that. Some operational people will also use it, but for the rest of us, for the rest of us, we uh, we will simply use the predictive value. We will simply care about the expected value. Okay. Now let's move on. So um. Multiple, okay. Uh, 
Now we cover uh, the the uh, simple regression. Let's move on and go into the multiple linear regression. Okay, so. Uh, Uh, excuse me, I, I should say actually all of this uh, Chinese character all, all, all come with English, right? So it's not a problem, <laughs> I wish. Okay. So for multiple regression, the difference from simple and the difference between simple and multiple regression is that uh, uh, the, the former, the former all, all only has one x, right? Okay. But the later will have a bunch of x, okay? You actually have uh, multiple x to predict y, right? So when you have more predictor, when you have more regressor, uh, the, you can actually make a better prediction, right? Okay? I mean, intuitively, we know it. We know that, right? And actually, it, 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 it is actually uh, true, right? Uh, when you have more predictor, uh, you can make a, a better prediction about something, right? So uh, back to our, back to this slide. As you can see that uh, when we do linear regression, actually it's not only single x predict y, we can have a series of x. So in together, use the series of x together to predict y. And that is normally the way. Okay, usually when you do uh, uh, when you do the like like linear regression, uh, you would use multiple x to predict a single y, and in that case, you will go into the RAM so multiple linear regression. Okay. Well, actually, uh, in most of the business application. Uh, you would use multiple uh, linear regression instead of single linear regression, okay? Uh, the reason that we will always start with simple linear regression is because it's easier to explain, right? In a simple linear regression, you can put the x here, y here, and you can draw a line, right? But when you have multiple x here, right, this, this chart is no longer valid, right? You will need to, like do some imagination <laughs> about what happened, right? Okay, so the simple linear regression is, uh, uh, is not very practical, but it is a very good starting point uh, to, to let us understand how linear regression works, okay? So, um, but, but practically, when we do multiple linear regression, uh, uh, the way we do in, in the R environment, right? Doing multiple uh, linear regression is the, almost the same as what we have done in the simple regression, okay? So procedure-wise, it's like, it's like almost the same, okay? So let's, uh, let's use another notebook to demonstrate uh, the use of multiple linear regression, okay? Let's go to... Uh, notebook B. Let me do some print now, okay? sure that I'm recurring. Okay, this is notebook B and uh, the HTML that come with it is here. Uh, let's uh, start with uh, the uh, HTML for uh, for better uh, explanation. Okay, so this time we are doing 
uh, multiple regression, multiple linear regression, and we are still using the LM function, right? Okay, so the function is the same, uh, but we are using a new set of data. Uh, this data is called climate change. Okay, okay, so it basically is the for every month. Uh, it's a long data, right? Um, from 1983 uh, to uh, 2008, something like that. And every month there is a measurement. Uh, and this is the greenhouse gates, right? You know what is the greenhouse gates, right? The, 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 the gates that would uh, make, make, make a hole of the ozone layer, right? Okay, that bad gate right? in, in our, uh, that, that would, uh, that could be the, 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 the reason of global warming, okay? So uh, for every month, we record the, uh, the, the, uh, we record the, the, uh, the amounts of uh, the green, greenhouse gases and also the temperature, okay? So the data is like every month, we measure the uh, density of all of the, all of this greenhouse uh, gases and, and also the temperature, okay? So with this set of data, uh, what is the target variable? Can you make a guess? Temperature. Yeah, the temperature. <laughs> so because we care about the target variable is usually the variable that we care. Right, we care. We care about temperature, and we we suspect that some of these uh, uh, greenhouse gases will have some relationship, right, uh, between the density and the, the temperature, right. So um, now, uh, and this time, before we building the model, we split the data, we split the data into training and testing. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, this is this is the, a new practice. Now, in your uh, in the traditional uh, in the traditional uh, statistic courses, like like what uh, Professor Lee would tell you, right? They uh, they will not split the data, right? They use all of the data to do the training, right? Okay. Uh, and when they measure the uh, the accuracy of the model they are using the training data as the uh, as the benchmark, but nowadays in today's data science we no longer use the training data to measure the accuracy of the model. Let, let me say it again. In 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 today's data science, we no longer use the training data to measure the accuracy uh, of the model, right? Uh, the reason is like, like let's, let's take a look at this again, okay? So this thing is very important. This is the data we have, right? And we use this model, uh, sorry, we use this data to build a model, right? Okay, so uh, the reason that we want to use, build this model is it's because that we have some new data and we want to uh, use this model, uh, we want to apply this model on this new data to do the prediction, right? So this is our purpose, okay? So a model is good only when uh, it do a good prediction on the out of sample data, right? Th th this data, we usually call them the sample, right? Okay. So you, you use the sample to, do, to build a model. So when you measure the accuracy of the model, you want to use some out of sample data, right? You want to use the data that at the time of training, we do not use, okay? Uh, to, 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 to evaluate the accuracy of the model, right? Because after all, after all, that, that is what we want to do, right? Okay. Uh, the accuracy inside the sample is not the real accuracy, right? For predicting purpose, uh, if we want to make sure that the model is accurate, 
we want to make sure that it is accurate in the data that all of the trending data, right? We want to make sure that it is accurate in the all of sample data, okay? So that's it's the reason why uh, in today's data science, we will split the data, right? Before we do the training. So when we do the training, we will all only use this training part. As, as you can see that because this is the time series data, right? Okay. When you have a time series data, usually we will keep the, right? We will split the data by time, right? I told you that uh, if we go into the notebook and we run to this point, then we can see that there is a variable called year and there is a variable called month, right? So we can do See? Okay, so we we have like starting from 1983, right? So we have a series of data. So we keep the last three years data for test and we use the we use this data for training, okay? Which means that I'm using this data to build a model, right? And I'll keep the last three years of data for testing. Okay? That is the, uh, why we do the splitting. Now, uh, after splitting, as you can see that we, uh, we are still calling this LM. Still we are calling this LM function to build a model, right? And this time I'll name the model, model one, okay, M1. Okay. Uh, and here is the same, right? The difference is in the simple linear regression, uh, on the right-hand side of tilde, you only have one variable. But now it's different, right? I'm using all of these greenhouse gases, right, as the x. So you have a lot of predictor. You have a lot of like, regressor and only one target, right? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight x and only a single y, okay? Uh, in linear regression, you will, you will only have a single target, right? But you can have a lot of predictor. You can have a lot of regressor, okay? Um, and see, here, we do not use the entire data to trend, okay? We simply use the trending data for trend, okay? Okay, I, I put the, I subset the D, right? So that everything that uh, that uh, less than or equal to 2006, I'm using for training. And for the rest, this should be the last two years, right? Uh, 2007 and eight, I use it as the out of sample data for testing, okay? Now I build a model uh, with this training data and also uh, the model spec like this. And we can also do the model summary, okay? I don't know, it's smaller for you to see. So you can see that uh, it's almost the same as this uh, simple linear regression, right? Uh, here is the model spec, and it will also give us the, right? It will also give us the, the uh, it will also give us the, the uh, distribution of the residual, right? It will also give us the uh, residual standard error, right? Which is the average error of our estimation. This is actually quite good, right? Because we are measuring temperature, right? So the, the difference between our estimation and the actual temperature uh, is only like 0 0.09, right? So it's actually quite good. Um, I'm not sure whether this is uh, I don't understand why why the temperature is like zero point one something. <laughs> uh, maybe this is like close to the like in the polar area. Maybe right. 
So it's like the temperature is very low. Uh, okay, so, but whatever, the, the standard error is, is quite small. And, and, and that, there, there's a, an, another uh, accuracy measurement called R squared that I will explain later, okay? Now, so uh, the estimation model will, come, will become uh, this way, right? Because we have uh, more than one x. So you will have more than two coefficients, right? So this is b0 and b1, b2, b3, b4, uh, up to b8, right? Because the time, this time we have eight uh, predictor. We have a regressor. So every regressor come with uh, estimation, right? Okay. So uh, so and you, and, and you still you you are using this like we call it a linear combination, right? Okay. So we have x and you have the uh, coefficient, but now you have more coefficient. Okay. So uh, and again, this coefficient can estimate uh, x marginal effects on y, right? Okay. Because if you can write uh, uh, in a mathematical uh, equation like this, uh, if x is increased by 1, y would increase by b1, right? Isn't it? Right? Okay. It's very, very simple mathematics, right? If x is increased by 1, so you, uh, then y is increased by b1. So we can treat this coefficient as the marginal effect of x on y, right? But you need to do it very carefully. Uh, I'll explain later. Okay. Now, uh, and and again, the the coefficient come with a standard error and also p value. Okay. And uh, as I say, uh, we are uh, we do not care too much about these two things uh, in our course. Okay. So uh, basically, you can treat the p value. Uh, as the probability that there is no relationship between x and y, okay? I, I mean, put it simply. Simply, you can think it that way. It's not precisely true, okay? Th let me say it again. This is not precisely true, so I put a question mark here, okay? But, well, to make it easier for you to understand, you can think it as the probability that X and Y has no relationship, okay? Okay, so if the probability is very, very low, right? Then we will say that the relationship between X and Y are significant. Because it's the probability that they, are, they have no relationship, right? So if the probability is very low, we will say that they are significant. They have a significant relationship, okay? That's uh, that's what you would learn in uh, in like Professor Lee's course, okay? Um, uh, now, um, if we treat the uh, coefficient as a random variable, right? We have done that uh, in uh, in our previous uh, notebook, right? We can actually plot the coefficient like this, right? So. Just want to give you the idea that the coefficient is not a fixed value. It comes with uncertainty, right? And uh, the coefficient estimation here is just the expected value of that coefficient, okay? For example, if we plot uh, B3, B4, B5, B7 uh, in different color, right? You can see that... Uh, in all of this coefficient, uh, the coefficient that comes with the largest effect is actually the is actually this one, right? What we mean by the largest effect, it means that the, its expected value is the farthest away from zero, right? So so this one's effect is larger than this one. This one's effect is larger than this one, right? In the positive side, okay? And in the negative side, we will see that this one's effect. Uh, if you if you if you see that uh, if you take the absolute value of, on this one, it will be something like this, right? Because it is something like 
uh, 0.15 or something, right? Okay, so so if we only care about it's, if we only see uh, it's uh, this guy is B five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So it's actually. It is it is actually uh, quite large, right? So uh, and no no th this is N O two, right? So uh, this should be this one, okay, right? Uh, so its value is actually quite large, okay? But it always comes with a very large uncertainty, as you can, you see that, right? Because its distribution is very widespread, okay? Its distribution spread actually above zero, right? Okay? So, uh, so this NO2, although it has a very large value, uh, it is not significant, as you can see, right? Okay? And, and this... This yellow one, right? This yellow one is uh, CFC twelve. Okay, uh, its effect. I mean, its estimation is smaller than NO two, right? CFC twelve. Uh, its estimation is like actually smaller than this one, right? But uh, but it is very significant. Why? Because its standard error is very small, right? So w when when this LM do the estimation on the coefficient, it estimates the coefficient as a random variable, okay? Um, and because they are random variable, so they have a expect value, and they also have a standard error, okay? So the expect expected value is it's estimated uh, uh, the effect, okay, and uh, the standard error is the uncertainty that comes with this estimation, okay, right? So you need to consider more things, uh, otherwise you might make some uh, misjudgment, okay? So, uh, so if we if we if we have that they this four uh, with this four, if we plot the estimation and the standard error on this four coefficient in this plot, right? Uh, can we tell that which guess has the largest effect on this plot? Anyone, do you want to try it? Which one has the largest effect? Uh, in this four four cases. The largest effect means that it has the largest absolute value, right? Okay? On the estimation. Okay? So the one who has the largest effect is this guy, right? But this guy is not... See, uh... The, the the probability that uh, it is it is actually significant is not very low, right? It's actually zero point. It's larger than zero point five, right? So it basically, we will say that it's not significant because uh, it comes with a very large uncertainty, right? And see, and, and this guy like like this this. Green one and, and and the yellow one, although they have a smaller estimate value, but they have a smaller standard error. So both of these two, right, they are significant. So usually in uh, inferential statistic, we will say that these two variable are significantly positive, and this variable uh, do not uh, the the effect of this. Uh, this coefficient, uh, sorry, the effect of this case is not significant. Um, and the effect of this blue one 
uh, this light blue one is marginally significant because it's very close to 0 0.5, right? Okay, so this is the thing that, uh, uh, this is the one thing that uh, multiple linear regression would need to know. Uh, the other important thing in multiple linear regression is about the collinearity. Okay? So anyone know what is the collinearity? Okay, so the idea is like this. Um, because in this formula, we want to, uh, we want to estimate the marginal effect of x to y, right? I mean, in this formula, the b is actually the marginal effect of x to y, right? Now, if some x, if among the x's, among the predictor, they are correlation, okay? If, the, if some of the cases has very high correlation, in this case, okay, this is the correlation matrix among the x, okay? This is the greenhouse cases. And as you can see that we have some, if we, if we like visualize, there's a tool to visualize the, uh, the uh, correlation matrix, okay? So you can, as you can see that the, the correlation between NO2 and CH4 is like, is as high as 0 0.9, right? And the correlation between NO2 and CO2 is like 0 0.98, right? So in this case, when, when, when the regressor, uh, when this X has very high uh, correlation, then we can no longer trust the, the, the their, their coefficient is no longer trustworthy, okay? Because you can no longer, you, you do not know uh, which one is taking effect on Y, right? This, this two X, they, they, they are basically, right, carry the same information, right? When they have a correlation as high as like 0 0.9, 0 0.98. The, the, these two regressors basically carry the same information, right? Okay. So when they explaining the variance of why we do not know which one is taking effect, right? So in that case, uh, when your x, if among your x you will have high correlation, you no longer you can no longer trust the coefficient estimation, okay? And that is what we mean by collinearity, okay? It means that amongst your regressor, they are high correlations. And the effect is, uh, if that happened, then you can no longer trust uh, this B, right? The estimation of B uh, is not trustworthy. Okay, it would become invalidate. Okay, so the one way to get out of the this uh, collinearity problem is to pick out the high correlated is to pick out the high correlated regressors. Okay, manually, like like in this one, because we can do a so so it's a good practice. Before you do a multiple linear regression, uh, you, should, you should do a correlation table, okay? Uh, and you can actually visualize your correlation table, okay? And then you can manually pick out, pick out the regressor that are highly correlated with each other, right? For example, uh, uh, it, it's, very, it, it's very obvious that uh, between NO2, CH4, and CO2, only one of them should stay within the table, should stay within the uh, model, okay? If you put multiple of them, right, their coefficient become incorrect, okay? Because their effect, uh, the, the, the ability that they can explain the wise variance uh, cannot be sure, okay? So, so we need to, when, when we know, 
when we do multiple linear regression, uh, you always have to make sure that among your regressors, there is no high correlation. Okay, so you can manually pick out, for example, in this one, in model two, I manually pick out the the regressors that uh, are highly correlated with each other. Okay, so uh, among NO2, CH4, and CO2, I only let one, okay? I only choose NO2, right? So if NO2 is in the model, then CH4 and CO2 cannot be in the model. Otherwise, otherwise the coefficient would uh, be invalid, 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 okay? And so after doing that, uh, as we can see that, the the residual standard error actually uh, increased a little bit, okay? From from zero nine one seven to zero nine five five, okay? Okay. So if your if your purpose is to make the prediction. M2 is less precise than M1, okay? Because, because, it, because M2 has a larger, right? Residual standard error, right? Okay? So if your purpose is to make the prediction, right? M1 is better than M2, okay? But if your purpose is to estimate the effect of each of these uh, greenhouse gases, to temperature, right? If your purpose is to estimate the coefficient, if coefficient is important to you, right? Then you need to you need to take care of the collinearity problem by removing the highly co correlated uh, regressor. You, you get my point, okay? So you can use M one or M two. M one is okay if you do not care about the marginal effect of this coefficient. Doing, doing prediction, it, it's still better than M2, okay? But if you care about the coefficient, right, then you need to use a model like M2, okay? You need to sacrifice some of the predicting power, right, in order to take a valid coefficient. That is a trade-off that you need to make when using multiple linear regression. Get my point? Okay? And that actually is the, uh, that actually is the only difference between like, between uh, simple and, that is actually the key difference between simple and multiple linear regression. Okay? Now, in R, there's a tool uh, this M2, uh, in comparison M1, is that you manually pick out the highly correlated regressors. In R, there's an automatic tool to do it for you, okay? If you put M1, M1 is the model, right? The very first model that we do. Then if you uh, call step. Now, this step would automatically remove the highly correlated <laughs> Uh, it would so uh, this step uh, function is also a, 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 a R tool, right? So it will actually uh, See, it, it, it actually removes some of the highly correlated uh, uh, variable for you, right? So when you see the M3, uh, only like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But um, usually, uh, uh, very seldom we will use this automatic tool if you do care about the coefficient. Okay, 
if you do care about that coefficient, you have to uh, do it uh, this way, right? Um, some sometimes you would you would use this automatic method, but um, for my experience, it cannot give you very precise. Uh, it it sometimes do not give you a very good choice. For example, in this example, uh, it actually put CO two and NO two both of them in the model, right? And the correlation between them is as high as see is as high as zero point nine eight, right? Okay. So, uh, well, this automatic tool is not very trustworthy, I should say so. Uh, you should not trust them too much, okay? Better do it, like, manually, okay? And... And there's the last thing that I... Uh, We only have uh, one last thing that we need to explain, uh, which is the which is this r square uh, determinant coefficient. Okay, this is the one thing that I have not. We do not have time to to explain in today's course. Okay. Uh, because for the rest of the time, I would like to tell you how to do the uh, exercise, how to do the uh, assignment for this week, okay? Uh, let's go to the... So I'll, I'll do that next week, okay? Now, in this week's uh, personal assignment, I want you to register into one of uh, MIT's online course. It's called the uh, Analytic Age. Okay. Uh, if you if you push uh, the Analytic Age, uh, you will see like this. And if you try to build the course material. Uh, it will tell you to do the registration, okay? Because it's an online, online uh, course platform, right? So you need to register into uh, um, into the uh, EDX platform before you can like enroll into this course, okay? So uh, when you enroll into this course, uh, you can see that it's actually free, right? With uh, optional upgrade, uh, uh, with optional upgrade, so you don't need to to upgrade, right? Uh, after you register into the EDX platform, uh, you can enroll into this uh, analytical age course, right? And this is a course that offered by MIT, right? The the you know that there there is a business school within MIT. It's called Sloan Business School, right? One of the top tiers of uh, business school in the United States. I I want you to like get into this course and and have some experience about how business analytics is taught in like top tier. Uh, business school, okay? Uh, after you do the registration uh, and then you can view the course, you should see something like this, okay? Let me... Whoa, what happened? After you can uh, register into EDX and enroll the course, you can view archive courses, okay? Now, this course is one of the course that use R to do business analytics. One of the best course, okay? That using R 
to do business analytics. Okay, it's one of the best course. The second best is I I think is uh, Harvard Business School. Okay, so uh, now uh, after you uh, can see the the course. Uh, you see that there are many, many units, right? Okay. Uh, the portion that I want to do, that I want you to do as this week's personal assignment is this one. Okay. The, they are unit two, right? So unit two is actually linear regression. Okay. Uh, you, you can forget about the, um, forget about the, Maybe you can also listen to the welcome note, right? Okay, and after the... So as you can see that the welcome note is like... Hello, this is Dimitris. This week, our lectures focus on applications of analytics into... So, they are really some introduction about uh, linear regression, okay? And then, then when you get into this, this is the thing that I want you to do, okay? You go into uh, section 2.1, right? The statistical sawman layer. Actually, I don't know what is the sawman layer. <laughs> okay. Now this, this is too like, like, uh, So as you can see that in this in this 2.1 there is a series of video and then exercise video and then quiz video and then quiz okay I want you to go over this thing okay go over all of the video and also the exercise okay because because see like today we I told you the linear regression right okay and the way to do linear regression in R is very, very simple. It's, it's like, it's like LM, and then you get the model already, right? And you, you, want, you want to use the model to do prediction, you just co-predict, right? Okay? The, and there's some complexity about the training and testing, okay? And in, in this series of uh, uh, video and also the practice, like you will see how the the professor and actually also an assistant professor will, will walk you through right uh, a, a case. It, it's actually a a real case. Um, the case is about is about wine. Okay, the price of the wine. Okay, is it, it is actually using the the. Uh, the variable like the average growing season temperature, the uh, the rain on the harvest season. You, you know that wine, right? The wine, the, the price, the quality of wine is actually depends on a lot of things, right? So they are using this regressors, right? This predicting variable to predict the price of wine. Okay, you can see that there is a data set. Okay, uh. In this week's uh, folder, I already give you a folder called wine regression. You see that? And here is actually two data set, right? This is the training data for wine, okay? This is the testing data for wine, okay? And, and in, in this video, they are actually doing some code, some R coding, okay? The R code is actually, it, actually you can download the file from here, okay? But but I already, uh, all of the file that, that this course use, it can be used here, okay? So you, uh, but I already uh, download the file for you, right? In, uh, I already download the R file here, okay? So you can see that video for, uh, video, for every video, everything that they already do it, okay? 
So I want you to, uh, in this week's, as this week's assignment, I want you to like, uh, where is that? Disappear again. Like, uh, go through this, uh, I should say, Very slow. I want you to go through like only this one, only this uh, section. Okay, so and and they are quiz, right? Uh, after every after every uh, video, there's a quiz, right? I want you to do the quiz and put the quiz in the RMD and knit it to HTML, okay? Because you, you already have the data here, right? You already have the code and already have the data here, right? And so I want you to like, like build an RMD and then uh, put the, do the quiz in the RMD and knit the HTML and then upload it to, uh, to, this, to the folder of, uh, personal assignment. Is it clear? Any question about uh, the assignment this week? Okay. Okay, so uh, do the assignment. And if you have any problem in doing this assignment, you come to us, right? Come to me, come to our TA. And remember that we have two TA sessions available. And if you cannot come with uh, like the TA session, you can still come to me, okay? Let me say it again. Okay, you can still come to me. I'll make a make a reservation with me directly. Okay, we will help you go through this. So. Now, even this is the personal assignment. I strongly recommend you that you come together and do it together. Okay, it will be a lot easier if you come together and do it together. Trust me. Okay, so uh, that's all for this week. Um, if no question, I'll see you next week. Okay. Okay, see you.